What is going on guys, it's Gamer here, back again with another Dragon Ball Super episode review. And today's episode is going to be episode 92, and basically, we're just going to go ahead and jump right into it. I'm not going to drag this on for any longer, because I do that a lot, and I apologize. But the episode b starts off, basically, with Goku. He just left Capsule Corp and everything, and he went over to wherever the hell you know Mr. Satan is and where also Majin Buu is because in the last episode we were left off with the cliffhanger that Majin Buu had, had had fallen asleep and Mr. Satan had called Bulma and then Bulma uh, and Bulma was told from Mr. Satan that he was asleep and Bulma went and told Goku and then Goku basically told everybody else because they were all in the same fucking room and so Goku like I said leaves over to wherever the hell Majin Buu is he's asleep and he can't wake up you know mr satan even before goku got there he actually had tried basically everything you know in his power to basically just wake this dude up but something sorry i had something in my mouth but he just won't wake up you know majin buu just won't wake up no matter what and we actually kind of find out that majin buu can actually fall asleep for like a second or two and then he's got full energy but when he's like in deep sleep uh he getting he's asleep for basically like two months or so so apparently there was a plot hole about that about all that stuff and there's actually another plot hole or a potential plot hole that uh was was there about putting majin buu into the room of speed of time or the hyperbolic time chamber into dub but later on something happens in the episode and so toei kind of pretty much covered that plot hole for pretty much anyone who was talking about it and so we go, we go back and we see a scene with Universe 11. We see, um, you, you know, the Pride Troopers uh, basically just like, talking about how, you know, we got to do this, that, or whatever, and stuff like that. Like, the, the, the Tournament of Power is going to be held for, like, 48 hours or so. Uh, I can't remember, but I, I, I kind of look, uh, looked it up a little bit uh, just to get a little bit of information so that way I'm not completely ignorant, ignorant of what I'm talking about. But they basically are talking about how we're, they're going to get trainees to basically protect all the planets within the universe. So that way, you know, they don't really have to worry about anything whilst they're gone. Uh, you know, and we actually have a, a funny little scene with uh, with Mr. Satan saying that, you know, if Majin Buu is not going to wake up, then I guess he's going to have to join in himself. And it's really funny because Goku's like, are you sure you want to do that? If you remember the last fight you saw, you know, there are a lot of strong dudes in this tournament. I'm not sure if that's necessarily the strongest thing for you to do. And then he's like, oh yeah, I forgot. Yeah, I'm out. I'm, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> and uh, we actually do go ahead and we, we get a scene of warriors from uh, uh, Universe 3. And of course we get to see like the gods or the deities of Universe 3. And we actually... We, we, we see the uh, uh, God of Destruction of Universe 3, uh, Moscow-sama, and he's basically just uh, speaking towards someone. And they basically have found this dude who uh, who created like this entire uh, this team that are like mechanical, like I guess androids, or just mechanical robots, or just artificial, hum artificial humans, I guess. Uh, and his name is uh, Nagarashi, I think that's what his name is. And he shows off uh, one of his uh, fighters that he's going to put into the Tournament of Power. Uh, uh, I, I'm not going to try to pronounce his name, I apologize for that. But, you know, he's basically created this entire like team for Universe 3, uh, consisting of all these mechanical robots, essentially, right? That's the entire team for Universe 3. So... Universe 3 is really unique in that fact, and I, and I really appreciate that Toei is like kind of really doing that. We go back to Universe 7, and we actually we actually uh, see Krillin in uh, number 18, Android 18, and they're heading towards Capsule Corp, and they go ahead and they, you know they group up with everybody. Uh, Krillin's kind of going off saying this, that, or whatever. He mentions the fact um, that you know him and 18 are ready. Uh, and stuff like that and he actually asked where Master Roshi was because Master Roshi wasn't there and if you remember what happened in the last episode he went and was trying to fix his perverted you know, ways of how he was you know and apparently you know that that no longer works on him anymore so 
kind of wish I knew how to do that because I don't know I might I might need a little help with that but <laughs> but no like uh, Krillin also then brings up the fact that he's uh, he's excited all this stuff and then Gohan says there's a problem and the problem is is of course that Boo can't participate because well he's asleep and there's just you just you, you just won't wake up I'm sorry but uh, uh, Pickle actually says this, and he also says that, you know, if Boo's no good, then they're just gonna have to enter in with nine people. And this scene wasn't really necessary. The only thing that seemed, like, kind of interesting was the fact that the Supreme Kai actually mentioned the fact that, uh, you know, if Zeno says that it's ten people, then it's ten people. You know, so they're gonna have to go in with ten people, you know, almost regardless, you know, or else some shit's gonna happen. And if you remember, like, uh, and I think it was the last episode, or the episode before that. I want to say the last episode. So in the last episode, if you remember, Universe 9 was actually struggling on uh, finding members for their team. So, I don't know. I, I feel like Universe 9 might have to go in just with only like a few members, and that's pretty much it. Because in the last episode, everyone was freaking out. Like, oh my god, our universe is going to get destroyed if, you know, because of this tournament of power. But... I, I don't know. I don't know. We're gonna have to just wait and see what happens, I guess. Krillin brings up that, you know, if Boo doesn't wake up, 10 million Zennies on the line. And then Gohan and, uh, and Piccolo were like, what are you what are you talking about, 10 million Zenny? And then Krillin's like, well, Groku said it. And then they were like, wow, so... I guess there is no fucking money prize or whatever. Uh, we, get a, we get a shot. We get a scene of Vegeta actually breaking himself out of the hyperbolic time chamber again or the room of spirit of, spirit of time so mr popo is going to be pissed about that if you remember uh when the episode when you actually walked into the room of spirit in time I, I thought that was funny and then we go back to uh universe six with uh kaba uh, Kalifla, and kale who is who's allegedly female broly for a lot of people in the community and so kaba is basically trying to teach Kalifla how to go Super Saiyan. He's trying to explain it as best as he can and he's he's trying to explain it as best as he can saying like I didn't I didn't really find out how to do it. I kind of learned it from this dude named Vegeta from a different universe. And I thought that was really funny but you know he's basically just trying to you know stir up the anger within Califla because he's explaining that the anger within the Saiyan is kind of he's trying to draw it out basically and it's not really working and then he's saying you know there's this tingling feeling and somewhere in the, on his under his back that kind of focuses on the strength of becoming a super saiyan she does it and then on her first try she becomes a super saiyan but couldn't maintain it uh she does it again and then she's able to maintain it again obviously because reasons i guess i don't know uh, uh i don't know i don't really know how to feel about it because I, I didn't I didn't really expect her to go Super Saiyan early, but I don't like it. I don't know. It looks neat. But she she shoots off a key blast straight up in the fucking sky and it just looks, you know, insane. It's crazy. And then uh she also brings up the fact that uh Kale is also a Saiyan. Kale is also a Saiyan and she should go ahead and try to turn into a Super Saiyan herself. And she's kinda like saying like she's kinda like really timid, her attitude's really timid, she's kinda just you know, out there behind just doing her own thing and kind of being timid, obviously, right? And so she doesn't really think that she can do it. And so I guess there, are, if you've seen episode previews and stuff like that, we've already seen that we're going to get like this rage scene with Kale with her going Super Saiyan. And it's going to look pretty neat. I don't know. I haven't actually seen any of these uh, previews yet. But if you guys have, then that's going to be really interesting for those of you who are excited for next week. We go back to Universe 7, and everybody's just basically pissed. Everybody's basically pissed because they found out that there's no 10 million Zenny, and that Goku lied. And then Krillin's going off towards Goku saying, you know, how could you lie to us, you know, about the 10 million Zenny? And this, is a, this was a scene with Bulma in it that I, I didn't really appreciate too much because... Uh, Goku's saying like the 10 million zenny, you know, Bulma can just give you the money because that's her family's literally the richest family in all all the planet, and so giving 10 million, 10 million zenny to all these people shouldn't really be that much of a thing. But she's being really she's being really stubborn and stingy about it, so it's like 
You don't have to be a bitch about it, but whatever. Uh, and then Krillin is actually talking about how he's mad, but he's not mad about the fact about the Zenny. He's mad about the fact that he hid, you know, the universe is going to get destroyed if they don't win. And so Krillin and 18, they're not going to join. Beerus gets pissed off, and he's basically, he basically then threatens them to, to Hawkeye him in the face if he doesn't join. And so Krillin decides to join. And then Beerus is like, you guys gotta do fucking something, because if you don't find the tenth member, then it, there's there's nothing basically we can do. You know, you owe us. We reversed time before Frieza had blew up the planet, so that way you can get you know you can defeat him and then save your planet basically. And then Goku's like Frieza, oh yeah, there's Frieza. Let's go and fucking bring Frieza onto our team. And then everyone's obviously shocked about it. And then the episode ends. Excuse me. The episode ends, and then at the very end, when we see the actual sta uh, stage being built, we get a little quick shot of the Emperor himself, Frieza, in hell, in his little area in hell, and he's just pissed off, so... We're gonna have to wait until next week until we see Frieza again. I'm pretty excited because I've said this before uh, in the past that Frieza is one of my favorite villains but the fact that he's being brought back again is kind of iffy in that stance but that's that's the end of the episode uh, I thought it was I thought it was moderately good there was a lot of uh, plot points and plot holes uh, that were you know covered up by Toei which I thought they did a pretty good job about it um, you know just the whole episode uh, some scenes weren't needed, but other than that, the episode was pretty solid. Uh, if you want to watch it, go ahead and watch it. You're, uh, you're gonna... Uh, I was gonna say you're not gonna miss much if you don't, but I would I would recommend watching it either way, regardless. But just, you know, I would, I would watch it. I would recommend it. I thought it was fun. There was a lot of really good scenes that were in the episode that looked really good. And so, uh, of course... Link will be down in the description to Crunchyroll if you guys want to watch the episode and also past episodes that have already aired before on Crunchyroll. If you've missed them before or you just want to catch up with Dragon Ball Super, that's perfectly fine too. So that's it. That's going to wrap up the video. If you guys did enjoy, be sure to drop a like. And if you're brand new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe. And I will see you guys next time. Have a wonderful day. Peace out.